Hi everyone, unemployment data tomorrow, so let's take a look at what we should expect. Then we'll take a look at all the usual data and charts. Do me a quick favor and like and subscribe and watch the video till the end to help out the channel and let's get started. So here's what we're looking for in this jobs report. Definitely don't want to see labor falling off a cliff. It's been trending lower in terms of the over in terms of the overall labor market and that is not what we want to see here. Non-farm payrolls are projected to show steady growth at 150,000, up a little bit from 142,000 while the unemployment rate stays flat. Again, need that to happen. 0.3% on the month over month wages with a 3.8% from a year ago, which is the same number from the August report. The real takeaway is that we need these to continue to stay relatively elevated, but not so high that they are projecting a risk of recession, but not so hot that they start to generate risk of future cuts. We need to hit that sweet spot, that soft landing that everyone's been talking about. And if it doesn't, markets are going to react in an aggressive way. The last time we saw an aggressive unemployment rate, markets tanked super aggressively. We saw a massive drop off. And again, I do expect this to have a big impact if we miss one way or the other. The other concern here is when we got the Labor Department overcounting jobs by 800,000 for a 12 month period through March of 24, adding more uncertainty to this job market analysis. And you have JP Morgan out here saying that they would be surprised if it missed to the low side, not as surprised if it missed to the high side. I think that's a little bit interesting to see, especially when we got that 800,000 revision down. Realistically, all of the previous numbers from March of 24 to March of 23 should have been much, much lower. There also could be some distortion from the dock worker strike. And JP Morgan says that if we get a strong number, they still expect a normal set of cuts. If they get a weak number, maybe we get 50 basis points. And I think that could really go either way. I think if we got a strong enough number, then we would potentially not see a cut at the next meeting and maybe another 25 basis points for the rest of the year. And just to talk about the bigger picture, the JOLTS job openings have leveled out pretty evenly, 1.1 to 1 for positions to unemployed workers. And we have a lot of people coming back from that great resignation. So jobs market continues to weaken, and this will be another data point that could swing markets either way. Moving over to fear and greed, we did step down to a 67 from a 68, relatively unchanged on the day. We did have some pretty decent swings. Can't really see it here on this chart, but we'll look at it on the actual stock charts here in a minute. Strength and breadths, no change, still an extreme greed. Put call ratio, still an extreme greed, but it is starting to elevate just a smidgen here up to 0.69. Interesting to see that jumping up a little bit. Maybe that's going to start to trend. That's in regular greed now. And then looking at volatility, still neutral, but continues to spike higher. Safe haven demand also spiking higher. Big outperformance there from stocks versus bonds. And then junk bonds continuing to be in extreme fear. This really has not changed much. It's been in fear or extreme fear for a while, not giving us a ton of good information information. Looking at seasonality still says weakness here all the way up until the 9th or 10th somewhere in there so bearishness tomorrow is the expectation pretty decent step down actually into the fourth that's about a 1% move or so is the expectation 0.6 down to almost 1.1 so maybe closer to a half a percent somewhere in there either way bearish for tomorrow. Moving over to the economic calendar you can see continuing jobless claims basically flat from the previous number. Initial jobless claims trended up just a little pre Previous number revised up a little, not great there, but really minimal change. And then this economic data also not great. So 54, just a little bit below expectation. Same here for services PMI. Factory orders missing pretty substantially, minus 0.2 versus 0.1 expectation. Previous number also revised down from 5% to 4.9. And then you can see non-manufacturing PMI, non-manufacturing prices did a little bit better, better than expectations by a pretty wide margin actually. 54.9 versus 51.7, so a little better there. And then Fed balance sheet continuing to sell off pretty aggressively. A little bit over 30 billion dollars here over the last week and then looking at friday obviously we have all of that unemployment data and that's pretty much it for the week nothing else really going to affect markets you do have one fomc member speaking but don't expect a lot out of that in my opinion moving over to max Payne. max Payne here is 568 that stepped down just a smidge and we are continuing to sit on that number for tomorrow and then looking at it here you can see 568 just a smidge and higher than current price and that really holds all the way up until the 10th and then the end of next week is a massive step down to 560 so 
Based on this, we should hold fairly steady up until that Friday session next week, which should be a decent step down from that level. We'll see how that holds up. And then you can see some more weakness 17th here up until the 25th and then the 30th. So some choppiness in there based on max pain. Otherwise, the rest of these say that we should be okay up until that time frame. Moving over to the charts, looking at the S&Ps, you can see we are at this same level, basically unchanged. 0.17 to the downside, still holding the trend, still at the same level. Momentum bearish, RSI bearish, continuing to trend lower there. Support is still right here at that 5,692, somewhere in there, which is basically right at these previous highs, just a few points above it. And then looking at the actual SPY charts here, you can see I added some levels, 565.16 is the current support, that's the one we've been watching, but I added one here, 569.90, that seems to be resistance from yesterday and today, and then I added one right here at the all-time highs, 574.71 is your all-time high, and then looking at the short time frames here on the hourly chart, really very little movement, it did gap down, did retrace that move, fill the gap on the wick, and then consolidation sideways choppy action ended up down just a dollar and basically unchanged after hours as well sideways consolidation into this unemployment data you can see you could argue maybe a bit of a double bottom we did not take out that big wick low from the first candle of the day but really it just looks like markets are hesitating as we go into that unemployment data you can also see that 21 ema acting as some resistance here in that after hours price action that is at 567.89 right now and then looking at the Four hour chart here on the tasty charts you can see that 55 ema acting as support still 565.90 touch that on the first candle of the day caught a little bit of a bounce but still cannot get above that 34 touch that 89 ema there at 565.84 still cannot get back above that 55 or the 9 or the 8 ema acting as resistance so Still a downtrend, and then if we get a push down, that lowest ATR band would be your price target, and that is sitting at 561.87. So that's about a percent and a half lower. Definitely could get there tomorrow on the catalyst if it comes in weak. At least for markets, we're still in bearish conditions here. You can see ATR trailing stop. Hasn't really moved there, 575.95. Moving over to the NASDAQ, same thesis here. Sideways choppy action ended up down 0.05. Dipped a little bit lower on the open, pushed right to the trend line, still acting as resistance, hit that level, pulled back slightly, momentum stepping to bearish, RSI continuing to trend lower. Still looking for a test of the 21 EMA, which on the daily chart is about one, one and a quarter percent lower for the current price target. So Looking for a little bit of bearishness, not a lot, at least in the short term. And then looking at those short term levels here, very similar to the SPY, it actually looked a little bit better. Dipped down on the open, hit these previous lows, held those levels, held a little bit higher low here in the mid session, still could not close ab above that 481.94 level, hit that on the closing candle, pulled back slightly, hit it on the next candle, pulled back slightly. So Looking to see if we can get above that level. If we can, maybe we can see a push back up here, 486.84. If we reject off here, looking for a retest of that 477.69 level, which is what we saw on the opening candle here on Wednesday, as well as the low here on Tuesday. So still a critical zone, still in the same region, has not really moved over the last two days. Momentum and RSI still say that this should go lower. And then looking at the four hour chart here on the tasty charts, again, 89 EMA continuing to act as support, currently at 479.70, waiting to see if that holds. Next dynamic support would be 476.81, that's the 144 EMA in there. And then below that is the ATR band. Right now that ATR band is sitting at 473.22, critical zone there. And if we do see a move like that, that is a substantial move. That's about $8 or a 2% down move potentially. Momentum on the volume weighted MACD did find a little bit of strength today. Interesting to see that rolling up over the last couple candles. But structurally, this is still bearish. We're still below most of the EMAs and SMAs with that ATR trailing stop all the way up at 491.10. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow, the Russell was down 0.67, took out my trend line and I did get stopped out of that position, took out the trend, took out the 55, almost hit my level 244.79, momentum bearish, RSI bearish, I think this has more downside and I think we're probably going to get a weak catalyst tomorrow, which is likely to push this lower. So right now the Russell looks a little bit weaker, it's continuing to step down three days in a row. I think it's going to go quite a bit more here in the next day or two. And then looking at the Dow, down here as well, 0.46, took out this trend line, touched the level for 18.38. Next level of support would be the 21 EMA if that level breaks tomorrow. That's at 4.16.79. 
And then below that is all the way down at 412 for me. So pretty shallow to that next stop. And then if that breaks, there's a lot of room here. And then below that, you have the 55 EMA all the way down at 408.87. Dow's held up really well, but you have a clear wick rejection, clear level there. Since then, we've been grinding lower. Definitely a topping pattern. Would expect this to roll down at least a bit more. You can see even with this previous topping pattern here, it did push all the way down to the 55 EMA before we got that next up push. Moving over to stocks that rallied here, or stocks that are moving at least, we got Palantir jumping 4.67% on a day where markets were not really that bullish. Momentum swinging to bullish, RSI super overbought. This has been a massive run. I'm not sure how I really missed it here, but you had a clear flat consolidation. Once this broke above this previous high here around 2780, should have expected a push. It did pull back really dramatically all the way back to this low of this consolidation before pushing higher. But since then, you can see massive move here all the way up around 81% from that low. Massive move almost into the 40s. Palantir has been on a run in the last two days have been very strong despite markets hesitation. And then looking at yin, this was brought up by one of my subscribers saying that China shares have been on a massive run. This is Y-I-N-N or the or China shares triple bull. Obviously, it's going to be very volatile because of that. But if you factor that in, this is about 150% from bottom to top. So China shares have moved around 50% in just a couple days. Massive move, huge volume coming in here. We did talk about the liquidity that China is injecting into their economy because they've been struggling, growth has been slowing. And if you look at this further back, China has been struggling for a long time. And now we're catching a big move here. It's been very oversold. Now there's volume coming in. You can see how much higher the volume has been. The shares have been like one to two million, a couple of spikes of like 20 million. And now these most recent ones all the way up in the 36 million. So something to consider. This might pull back. It's very extended. But then once it does and establishes that higher low, I would expect China shares to go much, much higher. So I don't think this is a short term play. I think this is medium term at the least. I don't know if this is the best way to play it. Let me know down in the comment section if there's better ETFs to play this on, maybe a little bit less volatile ones. But if you can stay nimble, maybe this is the one for you. China shares doing very well. Moving over to Apple and Microsoft. Apple still in the same range, really not very interesting. Momentum fading, RSI still fading. So you would expect this to still break bearish. We had the clear head fake here, even got me. I thought this was going to be a move here. Gap down and fell. I would expect this to continue to fall. Fake out, breakout, continuation lower, clear move. Looking for that 217.68 level. Hasn't broken down quite yet, but I think it will. And then looking at Microsoft, we've been watching this one for a while. This still looks very bearish. So we finally hit that 200 SMA. We closed pretty much right on top of it that's 41639 makes sense that that held at least in the short term but i do expect it to break next level 41336 once that breaks i think this is headed much much lower down below the 400 level so watching this one very closely if this breaks i think there's a ton of room to go moving over to tesla and nvidia tesla did exactly what we thought it was going to do pulled back to the 21 ema that was the first price target at 23909 Almost hit VWAP there, 236.69, but didn't quite do it. Momentum stepping to bearish, RSI stepping to bearish. If this level here at the 21 breaks, we're probably headed back down to 232.57, back from this previous consolidation high. Then we'll see what happens there. And then looking at NVIDIA, actually catching some legs here. So we saw this 21 EMA test yesterday and a bounce from there. Momentum stepping back to bullish here. We're right at the trend line. Almost touched my next level, 124.69. If that level breaks here at the trend and we get a push through here, maybe this heads back to 130. Certainly, it is certainly establishing a higher low here, which is pretty substantial. These previous lows were almost in line, and now you can see we're holding up here. So that looks quite a bit more bullish. We're back above the SMA. Momentum stepping higher. Maybe Nvidia has a little bit more in it. Another seven or eight dollars. Moving over to Amazon and Google. Amazon did exactly what we thought it was going to do hit the level there 181.41 continues to break to bearish momentum bearish rsi bearish did catch a bounce here after hours so maybe that's interesting up to 184 wonder what's pushing that that's two dollars higher about one percent after hours maybe that's just a bounce off the level here so see how that plays if it ends up gapping up gap down gap up maybe that's a reversal pattern at the key support level you can see that key pivot point back here at 22 august and 21 august right back here so 
Interesting zone. Maybe that's where we were looking for price to go before we saw a little bit of a bounce. Overall, I still think this is kind of a downtrend, high, lower high, looking for either a double bottom here around 171.90 or a lower low potentially. That would take you all the way down to the trends around here around 157. Right now, consolidation over the medium term, no clear trend, but your short term is bearish, so something to watch for there. And then looking at Google, this has been kind of choppy over the last three days. We got the big push here on Monday and then a second move here on Tuesday. But since then, we've kind of been consolidating in this same consolidation from back here, 21, 22 August, before we saw that bigger breakdown. At this point, I would say be patient. We're clearly not moving higher. We couldn't get above 170.95, but we're not breaking down quite yet either. Trend support sitting at 164.55. Want to see a little bit more conviction in either direction before we make a directional call on Google. It is worth noting that momentum starting to roll back to the downside, but the RSI is still bullish. So again, mixed signals. Moving over to staples and discretionary staples cratering 1% here, gapped through the level, gapped through the trend and pushed right to the 55 EMA, took out all of those levels and hit that next price target almost to the penny. That was at 81.06 and then the low of day was 81.06. So we touched it to the penny, momentum bearish, RSI bearish. Waiting to see what happens there. It is bouncing a smidgen after hours. But overall, I would expect this to pull back quite a bit more. It was a very powerful run. We're now touching some support. Maybe this is where we catch a little bit of a bounce. Maybe like a double top from here. Also a possibility, but I'd be patient. Short term still bearish. Medium term still bullish. And then looking at discretionaries down here quite a bit as well. 1.16% didn't quite hit the level. 21 EMA, 194.28. And then your next level of support would be 193.81. Momentum bearish, RSI bearish, I expect that to fall a little bit more, touch the level, and then see what happens from there. Moving over to oil and gas, this did everything I thought it was going to do, and I absolutely missed the trade, and I am pretty upset about it. Super frustrating, 3.29%, almost pushed right to my next level in one candle. Absolutely did not expect that kind of a move. Geopolitics pushing oil and gas higher. I thought it was going to go higher, but I didn't think it would be like that, so super strong. Almost hit the next price target already. Momentum bullish, RSI bullish, everything looks very powerful there. And honestly, with how strong this move was, there's probably going to be some follow through on it. And I really should have jumped in, but I just didn't. I had a busy day at work. I missed this first move and I thought maybe we'd see a little bit of a pullback, but we didn't. We closed nearly on the high and after hours, we're up almost another dollar. So big move there on oil and gas. And then looking at transports, continues to crater here. It just seems like the economy is trying to price in a little bit of weakness. Think it's probably going to do it some more here hit the first price target after that 21 broke that was 66.63 200 sitting just behind it 66.39 momentum bearish rsi bearish moving over to riot and marathon you can see both of these caught a move 2.48 and 1.71 percent interesting to see these bouncing when markets did not but we did but we did kind of hold this 21 EMA. We did hold a higher low here. If this pushes, your next level of resistance is about 7% higher. Something to watch there on Riot. And then similarly here on Marathon, did close above this downtrend. So this is a breakout retest. I mean, a really deep retest. Definitely close below. Maybe my trend line's a little bit off. I could shift this down. Something like that maybe makes more sense based on what we're seeing. Then it looks more like a breakout here, retest here. Kind of depends on how you draw it. But either way, this looks okay. Want to see 21 break at 1566. Next level would be the 55 EMA up at 1720. And if you do get a move like that, again, that's about 11% higher from here. So maybe Marathon has some more in it tomorrow. Moving over to 20 and 50 day breadth. Both of these cratered here today. 20 broke this structure, pushed right to the next level, 5175. Seems like everything's doing that right now. So Super bearish indicator, probably some more to go. Momentum bearish, RSI bearish. Similarly here on 50 day. Broke this previous low here on the 25th, pushed down to the next trend, gapped right through the 21. Trend support, 7041, next level, 6866. I would honestly expect it to push through those. 6225 is probably your next level. Might find some support on these EMAs, but I just don't think it's going to do it. I think these are going to break down more aggressively here over the next couple days. Moving over to yields, I've kind of been ignoring these because they haven't done a whole lot here. You can see a slight move here, mid-September consolidation. But look at this move here. Interesting. 3.7% here now on the two-year, broke back above the level, clean breakout, 
3.665 was the level. If this pushes up to that 55 EMA, that's at 3.89. That would be interesting. And I wouldn't expect markets to reinvert here on the bond yields. So that would mean that the 10 year needs to push up to this next level here around 3.97 to maintain a normalized yield curve. And if that happens, I really expect equities to move much, much lower. So if bonds start to catch a little bit of a move, something to watch for there. Let's go ahead and extend this out right there. That would give you some trend resistance at 3.88. But momentum's bullish. Our size bullish. Both of these are pushing up pretty aggressive. And that is not a great sign for equities. Moving over to the dollar. Dollar hit the price target as we expected. Hit the 55 EMA at 102.08. High of day was 102.09, so touched the level, pulled back from there, touched my level here, 102, pulled back from there a little bit. Momentum bullish, our side bullish. It'll be interesting to see how this plays after the unemployment data tomorrow. We did close above these previous highs, so you would expect the dollar to continue to run here. If 102 breaks, I think we're going to push to 102.98 quickly. Trend resistance, 103. And then above that, it's a lot of room here up to the 200, 103.7, so... If you catch a move like that, that's definitely going to be bearish for equities, and I do think there's more in it. You can see here on the hourly, it's been straight up for like four days. Very, very powerful move. And even seeing this bearish momentum, bearish RSI forming here on the hourly chart, price action really has not gone with it very much. Moving over to bonds, as you would expect, these did crater here today, 0.17. J&K popping a little bit after hours. I wonder what's driving all this after hours price action there. 97.3, moving higher. I wonder if that's the dockyard workers coming to a little bit of an agreement, pushing up Amazon. Might have to look into that. But looking at TLT here, big move down, next level, 96.50. Talked about this potentially breaking with momentum resuming, RSI looking quite bearish. So did close on the low, next level, about 25 cents lower. It's probably going to touch it. Go back to this low here from 30 August. Moving over to the VIX, continues to run here, 8.3%. Think this is going to continue to go. We need to start extending out these trend lines here. Marking this low here, 5 September, marking the high here, 10 September, marking the highs here again. Touch that level, think it's going to push here to 22.5. Your next trend a little bit higher, right in the same zone. Momentum bullish, RSI bullish. I think it's going to go here tomorrow, which again is forecasting some weak data. Moving over to my accounts, it says I lost $6, but somehow I lost a little bit more than that. You can see position positions here. I took off my IWM shares. They did catch a little bit of a bounce from where I took them off, but then I ended up putting on some puts here for 214 for about a dollar. So looking to get back in around 213. We'll see how markets do tomorrow. Either way, it gives me a little bit of protection. That's about $3 lower. And then looking at the queues, sold the 481s for tomorrow for $3.37. So lots of protection there, trying to take off some deltas. Market was basically flat after hours here. So either way, trying to make a little bit of money, but also playing a little bit of cautiousness going into tomorrow as markets don't look super great. Let me know down in the comments section what you think of the unemployment data coming out tomorrow. Where is it going to move markets? Otherwise, like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.